Hello and welcome to Youth in Agriculture and like always this is where I bring you amazing and inspiring stories of Kenyan youth who are in the agribiz sector. This week's episode is coming to you from Kikuyu. In fact where I'm standing is a 10 acre farm which is owned by different farmers who have leased a portion of the land to do their different types of farming. But today we will be learning all about cucumber farming with one of the farmers named uh, Peter Kimani who's been here for the last three years. He will be telling us all about cucumber farming and also giving us more details on the type of farming system they are using here. My name is Susan Mwangi and this is Youth in Agriculture. Now tell me, yes. there is something you mentioned before we even start talking about cucumber farming. Yes. I want to understand how uh -huh. is the system, how do you, it's a, such a huge farm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the system. So what happens, eh? we are different farmers, mm -hmm. you come and release a portion, like a quarter an acre, and then you construct your own greenhouse. Mm -hmm. um, there is a supplier for water. And then you do your own farming, you do your own way of marketing. Ah, that's how you do it. Wow. Yeah. So how much does it, if I want today to uh, to lease a quarter acre, yes. how much will I have to cope? It's around 50,000 to 60,000 for one year. Mm -hmm. uh, in some areas still here, you may find for 40,000 to 50,000. Nice. Yeah. And so you're entitled to that piece for the entire year? Yeah, for the entire year. And when it comes to water, do you just pay water or how do you go about that? Uh, there is a person who supplies water. We pay monthly at a flat fee of around 5,000. That one mostly is to cater for the water charges to the water management authority and uh, to, to pay for the electricity. Tell our viewers who you are, how you found yourself doing agriculture, mm -hmm. how long you've been here and how been for you? I was brought up in an uh, agricultural family. Uh, I grew up uh, in, a, in a farm, a small farm. My mother used to do cows, uh, poultry, my grandmother too. So the main inspiration came mostly from, from my grandmother who was doing horticulture. So I used to admire the way people used to come and give her cash. So uh, as a boy I knew uh, the richest person in the family was my grandmother because of the amount of money I used to, to see uh, have been given by, by the buyers. By profession, I, uh, I am a laboratory scientist, so this is a side hustle. But uh, in future, I consider it maybe to be my main hustle because um, they are prom it is promising. Uh, I would encourage anybody willing to join farming, come, start slowly, and then with the time, it will be a big business. So we will be getting right inside the greenhouse now to see the cucumbers and also get to learn how you do, it, how you go about the entire process from planting to harvesting. Come with us. Wow, this looks so good. Uh, you're welcome, welcome. Do cucumbers uh, grow this tall? Yeah. The it's uh, the kakapit family, yeah? mm -hmm. for pumpkins, mm -hmm. cucumber. Mm -hmm. uh, so they, they they normally grow, grow up once. Yeah. Grow upwards. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right. So you have to use these ones mm -hmm. to support them, although they support themselves with these ones. When somebody is thinking about cucumber farming, yes. what are the first things that they should have uh, get right first from the word go? One of the things is the seed. The seed. Yeah, because um, cucumber is a very sensitive uh, plant. One is the quality of the seed. Like the, the type you are seeing here is called Midas. It's from, from uh, Horad Green Tech. And uh, you check at its vigor. You don't go for the open pollinated because it may, it is cheaper, but in terms of production, it will be very low. Uh, an open pollinated is where a cucumber will give you a male and a female huh? flower. So in a greenhouse, the cucumbers done in the greenhouse are pathenocopic, meaning they, they, they do not need to, for, for the pollen to, to come from this flower to another flower 
for it to, to develop a fruit. So normally when the flower comes out, definitely if uh, your conditions are good, you definitely you are going to get the fruit. Tell us more about the size of this greenhouse and approximately, or maybe you have the accurate number, how many plants have you planted? Uh, so here we have uh, 3,400 uh, uh, plants. Um, normally what happens when you, 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 you are planting, you consider the spacing. So in a, in a size of like this one, uh, with, a, with a spacing of around 45, 45 centimeters, uh, 34 is the ideal number for this uh, size of a greenhouse, which is around a quarter an acre. Yeah. Let's talk about the soil. What type of soil favors cucumber farming? Uh, many types of soil do favor, but uh, normally they like well-drained uh, because, uh, however, and maybe 80% or 90% of cucumber is water, it likes a well-drained uh, soil. So even when you are, we, you are watering, we normally water just like uh, for maybe 30 minutes or one hour, and then give it time for it to drain. Otherwise, if, uh, if you overwater it, uh, the plant will not be able to survive, or you, you, you are not going to be able to get uh, the number of fruits per plant which you need. So tell us about the variety that you've planted and what guided you into settling for that particular variety. The variety is called Midas. Uh, it is from a company called uh, uh, Rizwan, uh, supplied here in Kenya by Green Tech, Green Tech Horror. This variety is, uh, is vigorous. Uh, it's appealing to the eye if you look at it. Uh, Aronga Fife and uh, cucumber, just like any other uh, fruit, uh, sometimes it ripens. So you have to be to be able to get a variety that will give you a longer shelf life. So if I take if it is taken from let's say from here, it is transported to Mombasa, maybe in a, maybe the harvesting day, the transportation that was those are two days, and then the supplier there takes them to the supermarket and then they stay in the in the shelf in the supermarket for another one week after that one week you will be able still to find the Midas cucumber being fresh so how exactly do you go about planting do you sow the seeds directly to the soil or do you go through a seed propagator when we get the seeds um, we normally take, take them to, to to propagators because this seed is expensive uh, uh, one seed is around 11 bob, just a single one. Like me, I normally take them to Naivasha in a company called Prantec. So at Prantec, they will take around two weeks to three weeks. And then when they are brought here, they transport them back to us. Uh, they will come as seedlings. So that seedling is what we are going to put in the, in the soil. After now, the, the rad preparation and clearing, and uh, put in go to manure. Uh, then, uh, five weeks, you will start harvesting your fat, fast fruit. And then the peak will peak from planting the seedling up to around two months. That is, that is when you have your peak production. Okay, let's look at the uh, crop management. Yes. What does it look like? Uh, cucumber, as I told you earlier, is very sensitive. Uh, so from uh, the way you you bring it up uh, down uh, as it comes up and it grows very fast uh, you can imagine in a span of five weeks you have started harvesting so what what happens when you you plant it you have to make sure the nutrition conditions are okay the organic matter in your soil is okay because it is a heavy feeder uh, because this this fruit, uh, several of them is a kilo. So you can imagine that is being taken from the, from the soil. It is very sensitive to uh, sudden change of climate. So you have to check, you have to keep on checking the uh, environmental control by opening the curtains, closing them when it is so cold, um, making sure that there is no dampness inside your greenhouse. Uh, because those ones will bring fungal diseases 
um, feeding well. Now, not the soil, but now the, even the foliar. Uh, checking on macro and micro uh, nutrients uh, because it requires all of them. What does this crop require in terms of uh, the fertilizer? Do you use the synthetic or do you incorporate even the organic uh, manure? Uh, the organic manure they are supplied normally from Kajiado. This size of a greenhouse we normally put around uh, around 7 to 10 ton of that and then the synthetic uh, uh, fertilizer. Uh, the, the, the three stages uh, when the plant is uh, is developing the, the roots when it is in the vegetative stage and when it is giving you fruits and, and flowers. And for the number of years that you've been farming, when you look at the cost implication from the, uh, from the point that you're planting, you're sourcing for your seedlings, and then you go to the market, do you see value for your money? How is the cost of production uh, versus the, the, the income that you get when you go to the market? One seed is around 11 shillings. Uh, so then you have to put the, the, the cost, the labor cost. Then you have uh, now the cost of fertilizer which is not favoring us, the farmers. Uh, there is that cost of manure. There is that cost of uh, propagation. Uh, normally, a propagation, they charge us like uh, around uh, four shilling per seed. So on top of what you bought for the seed, you put like four shillings for, for the seed ring. There is value. Uh, doing it for three years, uh, it shows you this. Uh, there is value. How much is it going for packaging right now? A packaging now we are selling at 50. Uh, sometimes it goes up to 70. Sometimes it goes up even down up to 20. So Peter, you say that you've been here for three years yes. and that you started with one greenhouse and now you are at five greenhouses. Mm -hmm. Take us through your growth, the journey of your growth. I started with capsicum. Uh, that was in 2019. Capsicum I did very well, started with a good price, and then COVID came in. But uh, the, maybe my advantage was I have another source of income. So I was able to sustain the, the farm because I could, I could tell with the production, how the production started, how we started to sell. I could tell it is very promising. So thank you so much for that first part of the information that you've shared with us. But of course, once we come back, you will be taking us around this greenhouse to show us some of the fruits that are ready for harvesting and what even makes you know that uh, a fruit is ready. Okay. Yes, yeah, so thank you so much for keeping it here on Youth in Agriculture, where we are learning all about cucumber farming. But as of now, we're going to be taking a short commercial break. But once we come back from the break, we have Frederick Olo, who is an agronomist with a Holland Green Tech Kenya, who will be giving giving us all the facts that you need to know uh, on cucumber farming. This is Youth in Agriculture and my name is Susan Mwangi.